right, Ron Paul on Kitco eMetals Conference, September 12, 2010. It's presently 11.15 a.m. on Mountain slash Gary Land time. Waiting for Dr. Paul to get on the air here. He should be here any moment. And we'll check out what he's got to say about gold or other metals, but probably he's going to be talking about gold, I would think. It would make perfect sense. And he's due to be on, like, now. So, um, where the heck you at, buddy? Get on here. Tell us about your gold. He's on yours. Well, then I'm assuming he'll be on mine in a second. I don't know. Do I have to close this window and reopen it? This is just not right. How can he be on here? I'm going to close this window and reopen it. Sending in a certain fashion. Uh, they, they are the enemy. And uh, it is the, the answer that we have to give is an alternative to that. And that, of course, is sound money, following the Constitution, limited government, private, private properties, contract rights, all the kind of things that created prosperity in this country at one time. I think the election will go favorably uh, for the Republicans, and I believe they most likely, as the polls show, will take over the House and even possibly the Senate. But they're not going to change anything. They're not going to repeal anything. I don't think Obama is going to be as cooperative as, uh, as Clinton was when he uh, lost the House and Senate in 1994. I think he's going to be very determined, so uh, there won't be a lot of repealing done. But the important thing, though, from a, the viewpoint of our finance of our country, I think it will slow things up a little bit. Uh, they call it gridlock, and when they use gridlock on the TV, they make it sound like, oh, those horrible people who want to have gridlock. Believe me, compared to what we're having today, a little bit of gridlock would go a long way. So I'm all for the gridlock, but I'm also for eventually changing the, the whole system because I'm uh, an advocate of free market economics. I believe in Austrian economics. I believe in the gold standard. I don't believe in the central bank. I don't believe in fiat money. And... Uh, I, I believe the answer uh, to our problems can be found, not only with our Constitution, but with sound economic uh, policy. You know, when we got into this crisis, most people date the current crisis uh, at uh, 2008. I happen to date the crisis, uh, the slumping economy from the year 2000. And I don't think we've improved very much over that period of time, and things have gotten worse. And uh, we tidied things over with the uh, with the house housing bubble, but uh, I think the uh, economy uh, right now has not responded at all to doing the things that Congress has done and the Federal Reserve. And we who believe in the free market shouldn't be surprised. The individuals, whether political or economic, uh, predicted those who predicted the oncoming crisis were never listened to. And all those, a lot of times you hear on TV, oh, we're surprised, we're shocked uh, that we had a, uh, had a downturn. Yet there were a lot of people predicting what was coming, and uh, those individuals were able to protect themselves individually, and they knew about the significance of investing in gold and other, uh, other commodities. So in this period of time, though, uh, from 2008, it was decided that we had to do something. We had to rush to the rescue. Well, we got into the crisis, because of this belief in central economic planning, that spending was good, deficits were fine, borrowing was okay, and regulation would solve all our problems. Every time we get into trouble, we regulate. Just think of what after, uh, happened after Enron. We passed, the Republicans passed, uh, the Sarbanes-Oxley bill. So uh, that's what got us into trouble. So what have we done since 2008? We spent much more, we borrowed much more, we inflated much more, doubling the, the money supply, and then we go and pass this financial reform package, massive amount of new regulations, and they wonder, why hasn't the economy uh, responded? In this period of time, the Fed and the Congress injected $3.7 trillion. And uh, guess what? There's been no significant increase in the GDP from two years ago. 
Matter of fact, in real terms, it's actually down. But you say, where in thunder did the money go? If it just passes out, we might have been better off. Or if it just repealed the income tax, we would have been a lot better off. But uh, it, it didn't work at all because all it did was it was mostly used to buying up bad assets, the worthless assets, taking it off the hands of the, the bankers and the investors and, and Wall Street speculators, and it was put in the hands of the taxpayers. Now, we own that. And uh, it, they never have come. Now, they have a commission up there studying the financial crisis. The members are not free market economists, and they never call a free market economist that might have predicted this problem in to testify. So they just go on their way. So there's no reason in the world to expect the current crop of politicians and economists in Washington will do anything to help us. They're going to make it much, much worse. As I said, um, I believe it started, uh, the real correction started in 2000. Uh, of course, the bigger bubble began in 1971. That's when I got really interested in economic policy and ran for Congress first. It was a breakdown of Bretton Woods, which meant to me that there will, will would be no more restraints on the politicians to spend. And, uh, of course, we had massive inflation and uh, devaluation of the dollar and endless. We did have recessions, and they were able to come by and patch things over. There'd be a leak in the bubble, and they could pump harder, and it seemed to help. But finally, the hole in the bubble is so big, it burst in 2008, and they're pumping hard and hard. The faster they pump, the faster the, uh, the stimulus flows out, and it doesn't do uh, any good. But since the year uh, 2000, uh, we now have 2.3 2 million less people working, 2.3 less people working. I mean, there are a lot more jobs lost in that, dec in that decade, but we have 2.3 less people working. At the same time, our population increased 26 million. So you know there's a lot of people out there that aren't working and are having a tremendous amount of trouble. One thing that might uh, occur even before the election, and we might hear about that next week, is uh, there's a tendency for people in Washington, and even in this country, to blame others for our problems. It's never our fault. So if there's a trade imbalance, it's somebody else's fault. And if we can just change the exchange ratios, everything is going to be okay. But there's a strong movement in the Congress to demand the Chinese uh, raise, raise the value of the renminbi. And that will restore trade balances with China, so, uh, so it's said. Uh, I think this is, you know, there, there's, there's probably some truth to the fact that, you know, it might be artificially uh, strong and, and they want to do that. But what do we do? We have an artificially weak currency. We're manipulating our currency all the time. And we're the reserve currency. We destroy the value of the currency. So for us to be telling other people what to do with their currency is, I think, uh, beyond me. But if they have their way, if Congress has their way and try to punish the Chinese, it really doesn't serve our interests long term. It's sort of a benefit. We buy goods, we give them paper dollars, and they buy, they buy far bad debt. And besides, if there is a rearrangement in these uh, currency arrangements between the dollar and the renminbi, that means our cost of goods will go up. It's in literally a tax on the consumer here. So it won't matter. That means the, they say it, it did work in that sense the Chinese would end up with less dollars, and they're then going to be less likely, of course, uh, to buy our debt, which I think they're already uh, getting to that point. Yeah, I believe right now we're in the midst of a bond bubble, and which is part of a, of a dollar bubble, and they're trying to uh, revive the economy that way. The housing bubble's behind us, and it's going to be a long time before they allow things to happen. Of course, the correction is to allow bankruptcy to occur, liquidate bad debt, liquidate bad investment, and uh, yet, no, all they know in Washington is another bubble. So everybody's pouring into the bonds. And, and, and even though the dollar is weak, it still is way too strong as far as I can see because people still trust the dollar. They still trust us. We still have a lot of wealth. We still have the military power. So there's an artificial trust in the dollar, but I think it's, com I think it's coming to end. I think the most fascinating thing that I watch in, in the financial or the dollar market is how often foreigners are still buying our debt. Just this week, uh, foreigners bought up $10 billion worth of our debt, and sometimes they buy, buy more. In the last year, they bought $400 billion of debt, which to me means that others are monetizing our debt. And uh, I think there's uh, arrangements uh, between our central banks. Uh, 
and this is why I wanted to audit the Fed to find out what these international arrangements are, because they can literally extend loans and guarantee loans, and, and they can make deals with other central banks. They can buy up our debt and play these games, but they do not want us to know about what's happening. And that is why, even though we had 200 and, uh, 320 co-sponsors of that bill, and you only need 218 to pass, that is audit the Fed bill, they were able to remove it. We passed it in the House. They removed it in the conference, mainly because the Senate wouldn't go along with it, and the Fed was all that powerful. It shows you how powerful they are and how determined they are to preserve their power to create money uh, out, out of thin air. But one thing good came of this. In these past two years, the public has become very interested in the Fed like never before. I think there's more public interest and in understanding of the Fed than has been in, uh, since it's been established. Which, mean, which means it's a little bit different. In the past, the Fed has gotten a pass. What would happen is if there were good times in the bubble formation, the Fed got credit for it. And then when there was a correction, we had a recession that was controllable, then the Fed came in and they inflated and they stimulated growth again. They got credit for getting us out of the recession. But I don't think it's going to happen anymore. I think the Fed is on the defensive. They're still very powerful. It's going to be very difficult to overcome. But you have to overcome it intellectually first. And average people in the street today know something about the Federal Reserve. I am very impressed when I go to the college campuses and a lot of young people are reading about the Fed and they're studying Austrian economics and, and they're starting to understand this. So I think a lot has been achieved even though that bill wasn't passed. If, if we had passed audit the Fed bill, it wouldn't have automatically revealed everything we want to know about the Fed. It would have been fought in the courts, and they would have obstructed. It would have been very, very difficult. Now, my position on the Fed is unconstitutional, should have never come about. Uh, we should get rid of the Fed. I don't think